sponsored by my streaming service, Nebula. Sometime between 55 and 70,000 years ago, the ancestors of every single non-African person alive today left Africa to spread around the world, as far as we're aware with the evidence we have. This is known as Out of Africa 2, which is a terrible name because there were certainly many different migrations of Homo sapiens out of Africa at different times, not just two. We know this because some of our ancestors slept with Neanderthals 130,000 years ago, and there are also a few human remains that have been found outside the continent that predate that time. There were also undoubtedly migrations back into Africa. People moved freely. They didn't care which continent they lived in. They almost certainly didn't have a concept of that. But we have to call this movement of people something. And so out of Africa too is the name we have for this movement of our direct ancestors outside of the continent at that time. But if that's out of Africa too, then what was out of Africa one? At some point deep in prehistory, archaic humans, somewhat different to you and me, but similar in some very key ways, left Africa to spread around Eurasia, living a new life in wildly different environments to the one they left behind, evolving into different populations of hominins. When exactly was this migration, how many migrations were there, and who was doing the migrating are subject to huge debate. I've been looking at the earliest archaeological sites around Eurasia to try and answer this question. Let's look at the evidence. It's the mid-1980s during the dying days of the Soviet Union. Archaeologists had been excavating in and around the medieval cathedral of Dmanisi in southern Georgia. Which, just look at that, it's, a, it's an absolutely stunningly beautiful location. What started as a medieval excavation quickly shifted focus when they realized the builders, in creating the basements and foundations of the cathedral, had dug through layers containing extinct prehistoric animals. In 1991, the first human remains were found, and over the next 30 years, Incredible relics of a bygone age have been pulled from the ancient dirt. In total, five skulls and 50 other hominin bones have been found, as well as 15,000 stone flakes and 900 artifacts. It really is one of the greatest archaeological sites in the entire world. Excavations are still ongoing. I'm sure it has more secrets to reveal. At 1.78 to 1.85 million years old, they are still, as far as I'm aware, the oldest human remains found outside of Africa. This sets our baseline for Out of Africa 1. For sure, without a shadow of a doubt, hominins had left by 1.8 million years ago. Because of the incredible preservation at Dmanisi, we get the clearest idea of who these early pioneers were and how they lived. The first thing to note is that they were relatively short and small-brained, with brain sizes between 610 and 775 cubic centimeters. That is about half the size of a modern human, about 400 cubic centimeters smaller than later Asian Homo erectus, and slightly smaller than Turkana boy, the very famous Homo erectus fossil from Kenya, who would have had a cranial capacity of about 900 cubic centimeters fully grown. The Dmanisi hominins also only stood around 1.5 meters tall, not absolutely massive. This is really interesting because before Dmanisi, anthropologists had believed only big-brained, long-legged hominins like Homo erectus were able to leave Africa and colonize Eurasia. But as we'll see, that was certainly not the case. Perhaps not surprisingly, for smaller-brained hominins, they produced older one-style tools, the simplest form of stone tool our ancestors made, consisting of simple flakes and choppers. These really are quite simple compared to the bifacial tools produced by later humans. However, despite their small brains, despite their simple tools, these folks were not idiots. Of the 17,000 animal bones found at Dmanisi, every single one belongs to a Eurasian species. This is a really crucial point because one very popular idea has been that the first hominins to leave Africa were simply following their prey out of the continent, whenever climatic conditions allowed. Yet Dmanisi shows that these ancient humans with their simple tools were able to adapt to new environments, new prey, 
They weren't stuck following African animals, following the niche they had carved out. Archaeologists believe the region might have been occupied for 80,000 years, so the population was seemingly quite stable. This was no doubt helped by humanity's greatest ability. You guys have got to check this out because this is, in my opinion, the coolest find from Dimenisi. This is a cranium D3444 and uh, the jaw D3900, I believe. They're a matching set from the same person. As you can see, this person is, is kind of old and they only have one tooth. I believe that little nub in there is the uh, last piece of tooth that they had. This isn't a result of the preservation of the fossil or anything like that. They lived like this. We can tell that because the sockets for the teeth have been reabsorbed into the jaw. There's no little holes there for the teeth. So they lived like this for a while, gumming their food, gumming their, their woolly rhino up. It's probably not easy to live your life like that, especially when they're probably not doing that much cooking. Maybe they're doing no cooking at all. Probably would have been quite a hard life for them but they lived for a long time. They lived for a long time with this condition, which shows that even way back then, 1.85 million years ago, humans were starting to be really super cooperative. And that is ultimately our strength. That is ultimately the reason I believe why we have expanded across the entire planet and achieved everything we've achieved because we can work together, we can communicate, we can share information, share loads of information. This skull, this toothless skull, we can really see in this person's lack of teeth, the like the start of humanity's, the start of humanity's greatest strength. I really believe that. There's been a lot of debates as to how we should categorize the Dimenisi hominins. Should they be called Homo erectus or maybe Homo georgicus, maybe something else. In my opinion, these labels are not super important. What is important is that they show that 1.85 million years ago, small-brained hominins using very simple tools were leading very social lives and were capable of adapting to different environments outside of Africa. But were these hominins really the descendants of the first migration out of the continent? Elsewhere, subtle clues have been emerging that could push back the first migration of hominins outside of the continent by hundreds of thousands of years. Strangely, for a video about the earliest migration out of Africa, our next site is 9,000 kilometers away on the Indonesian island of Flores, and much more recently in time, roughly 80,000 years ago. Homo floresiensis, discovered in 2003, is one of the most controversial discoveries in the history of human evolution. Standing at just one meter tall, weighing about 30 kilograms, with a cranial capacity of 426 cubic centimeters, this tiny population of ancient humans has generated a lot of debate. So far, there have been three main ideas as to who they were. First, that Homo floresiensis is derived from Asian Homo erectus, who is well known from the neighboring island of Java, but as yet unknown on Flores. Their small stature is believed to be a result of island dwarfism, a phenomenon where large animals tend to decrease in size when isolated on small islands. It also happened to these little prehistoric elephants. Shout out to them. Second, that it represents a population of modern humans that suffered from some sort of genetic condition. Thirdly, and crucially for this video, that they are a distinct species that derived from an early lineage of Homo, before Homo erectus. Of these three theories, the idea that they were modern humans with some sort of genetic condition has not stood up to scrutiny. But the question remains, did they descend from Homo erectus or perhaps an even earlier hominin? In this 2017 study, which as far as I'm aware is the most recent on the subject, a data set of 133 different hominin species from throughout our evolution was analyzed to find the closest relative of Homo floresiensis. The results supported two possible conclusions. First, that Homo floresiensis is a sister taxon to Homo habilis. Homo habilis is a notoriously tough species to define. They're larger brain than the Australopiths, but physically still quite short, just over a meter tall. They made older one style tools, very simple stuff. 
basically this would place the origins of Homo floresiensis right back to the very transition from Australopithecines into early Homo. The other possibility is that Homo floresiensis was part of a basal clade that included Homo floresiensis, Homo erectus, Homo ergaster, Homo sapiens. In other words, they're part of the ancestral population of early Homo that existed way before larger brained humans evolved. In either case, according to this research, Homo floresiensis apparently split from the rest of the Homo lineage extremely long ago, at least 1.75 million years ago. They were not, according to these results, Homo erectus that suffered from island dwarfism, although island dwarfism may still have played some role in their diminutive stature. They also could rule out Homo floresiensis being a close relative of the hominins found at Dimenisi. Obviously, all this information is subject to huge change. We could find more Homo floresiensis remains that give us a clearer picture of their anatomy. But as it stands at the minute, they have some really archaic features. This suggests that there were multiple waves of really archaic hominins outside of Africa. First, the population that led to the group at Dimenisi, and the population that led to Homo floresiensis. But other than their anatomy, are there any other signs anywhere else in the world of a super early migration of hominins outside of Africa? I think there are. I think there are, and this is where it gets tricky. <laughs> A little bit trickier. China has an incredibly rich archaeological record from the Lower Paleolithic, definitely one of the richest outside Africa. Currently the oldest confirmed human remains from China is the Gongwangling cranium from Lantian. At the minute, it is assigned to Homo erectus and dates to 1.63 million years ago. Extremely ancient indeed, but after the population at Dimenisi. However, a new site may push back the hominin arrival in China significantly. Archaeologists, again working in the Lantian region, recently unearthed a site that was sporadically occupied for over a million years. No human remains, but instead stone tools, the oldest of which dates to an astounding 2.12 million years ago. Hundreds of thousands of years before the hominins at Dimenisi, but right in the ballpark for Homo habilis, or early Homo. Again, these are very simple stone tools, older one style tools, similar to contemporary tools from Africa, Dimenisi, and the type of tools the Homo floresiensis produced. Although these small rocks are not as exciting as human remains, that is fair to say, someone had to make them. It is still evidence of humans out of Africa. Over in Jordan, archaeologists have found older one tools dating to 2.48 million years ago. Jordan, in the grand scheme of things, is obviously pretty close to Africa. And I think more and more, as anthropologists find more sites, more fossils, they're really starting to include Western Asia alongside Africa as a key region of human development, human evolution. It seems that hominins are in and out of the region really frequently. Which makes sense, they are neighbours. But still, 2.48 million years ago is really long ago. Australopithecines were still around at that time as far as I'm aware. This is really at the very beginnings of the evolution of Homo, and it's a sign that these small-brained hominins are pushing the boundaries, pushing the limits of their environment and, and where they can live and how they can adapt. It really raises loads of questions about their, their capabilities. But incredibly, that's not even the oldest site we're going to talk about today. This last site was actually the inspiration behind this whole video. So I've been working on a video on uh, South Asia for three or four months now, interviewing lots of experts from all around the world on this really interesting topic. Hopefully it's going to be out in October. Um, but Whilst I was chatting to Indian archaeologist Gopesh Jha, he mentioned this really early site. I think that is also paleomag, if I'm not wrong. So that date basically comes from Masol, the site near Chandigarh in the lower Shivalik regions. There's evidence of 2.58 or more than actually 2.5 is a younger date, younger uh, range of date. Okay, so what was Gopesh talking about there? Well, let's look at a map quickly. So here you have Flores and Java down here, where we know ancient hominins were certainly living. Homo erectus, Homo floresiensis. To get to there from Africa, they basically had three options. One was to hug the coast of South Asia and go around like that. They almost certainly did that. There's a very early site from southern India called Atarampakam. 
No human remains, but some stone tools that are dated to, I believe, 1.5 million years ago. So about contemporary to the population at Dimanisi, we also had hominins in the far south of India. The other route they could have taken was over around the top of the Himalayas. Probably a very difficult route to take. I imagine if they tried that then, there are the remains of uh, some unlucky hominins buried somewhere in the Himalayas. But we do have a lot of hominins from China, so that's a possibility. Or they could have just done a straight shot through modern Pakistan, through India, through Bangladesh, down into Asia that way. So with that in mind, archaeologists were excavating this region where India meets Nepal, the Sivalik range of hills, I believe it is called. And they found some pretty intriguing stuff, some very old, very intriguing stuff. Whilst sifting through almost 1,500 fossils, a joint French and Indian team of archaeologists found three bones in particular which had multiple cut marks on them. They recreated the cut marks using stone from the site, and they are confident that these were not caused by animal teeth. They hypothesized that animals were being scavenged by ancient humans, perhaps after they had already died in floods, which seems to have been a major geological action in the area. Three bones with cut marks is not a lot. It's true, can't be denied. However, the team points out that from Java, where we have very good evidence of hominin activity for well over a million years, we have only found five bones with cut marks on them. So they do consider this to be statistically significant. Whether or not these truly were made by humans, and I don't see any reason to believe that they weren't, we do have to keep in mind that the very earliest migration out of Africa is going to leave a very subtle archaeological trace. We have to keep our eyes and our minds open for very small clues. I've been trying to end this video so many times. I just, uh, I just can't think of the words to sum up how I feel. So, but what can we say about Out of Africa 1, this first movement of hominins outside of the continent? Well, as for when it happened, seemingly at least 2.5 million years ago, according to the evidence from Jordan, but maybe even earlier than that, 2.6 million years ago, if those cut marks on those bones in India were really made by a hominin. As for who was doing the migrating that we really have evidence for, well, small brained hominins, early homo, before the evolution of Homo erectus, or at least the very earliest beginnings of Homo erectus, with brains a third of the size of ours, making simple older one style stone tools. And yet despite this, despite their small brain size, despite their smaller body size, they're adapting to non-African environments, hunting different prey, living in much colder regions like Dimanisi, moving to as far as Southeast Asia, island Southeast Asia, as, as evidenced by the body of, of Homo floresiensis. And as evidenced by Gummy Joe, they're able to help each other. They're looking after each other. Some hominins are, are living to an old age and they're, and they're uh, probably being helped by members of their community. I suspect somebody was chewing that person's food for them, which is, which is pretty grim, but Great evidence of cooperation, man, if you're willing to do that for someone. Blimey, you must really love them. These hominins were persistent though, on Flores, isolated from the happenings of the rest of the world. They persisted until 50,000 years ago, or their descendants persisted until 50,000 years ago, when they ran into the descendants of out of Africa too, our ancestors. There's something so poetic about that. It's just two paths separating two million years ago and then reconnecting on a, on a tiny island in, uh, in Indonesia. It's just, the, it's just the, the perfect illustration of how tangled and, and, and wild a journey human evolution is. I, I really love it. I've been trying to end this video so many times because I just I can't find the words to adequately express how I feel about that. Um, it's just fascinating. It's just fascinating. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. I'm working on a special video right now about a particularly important plant in uh, human development. And it's just not a great fit for YouTube for reasons that I don't need to go into. Fortunately, I can whack it on 
my streaming service Nebula, absolute banger of a service, run by the tippy top best educational YouTubers. I'm gonna be throwing up a whole series on there, hopefully starting in November, about some enjoy, <laughs> some particularly uh, popular pastimes in the ancient world. It should be an absolute banger. Can't wait to make it. I've been wanting to make it for a long time, but on YouTube it just doesn't work. You can get Nebula for just $3 a month or $30 a year. It's an absolute bargain at any price. I got it ages ago, long before I was a part of it. Whilst you're waiting for my particularly fragrant video to come out though, you can check out some other banger exclusives, wordsmiths, modern conflicts, extremities, uh, get early access to uh, jet lag, which is honestly my favorite series right now on YouTube. It's shameless fun and I just love it. Who doesn't want to play tag across the globe who didn't have that dream when they were a kid? I certainly did. It's all great stuff. It's a great way to support me. It's a great way to support other channels. I know you're already watching if you're watching my stuff. Check it out. The link's in the description. And yeah, this should be out in November. Everything going to plan. I'm really looking forward to it. Excited to share it with you. Uh, yeah, it's a banger. Thanks for watching, everyone. See ya.